Good day, everyone. Welcome back. So today we'll be talking about subletting vectors. Okay. So we go to R Studio subletting vectors. In this lesson, we'll show how to extract elements from a vector based on some conditions that we specify. Very large vectors, we only select part of it. Okay, there's a vector x is being created which contains a random order of 20 numbers. So let's have a look at x. So these are the x. Okay, we'll use a subset immediately following the name of the vector. For example, try this 1 to 10. We'll say bracket 1 to 10. We select the first. 10 elements. Let's let the first 10 elements. What do you think? X is and the X will give you. Is and the X is to find out those is and A's. And the X which contains all and A's will be a vector of all and A's. A vector of all and A's. Okay, let's try it. So the condition is in the bracket, is in the or in this. Okay, then contains all the non any values from it. So non any. You say this mark to indicate not any. So it's stored into one. So we have a look at one. So y is all the non any values of from vector x. What will give you this? So we already know this is a y vector. Right. And uh, I will select those y's whose y's value is greater than 0. So all the positive elements of y. All the positive elements of y. So have a look. y greater than 0. So these are the values greater than 0. Look, greater than zero. And a is not a value, but rather a placeholder for an unknown quantity. So the expression x and a greater than zero evaluates to n a. So n a is still being stored. So we will still have a mixed n a inside. Although those negative ones has been removed, including zero. We can do this. X is not n a and x greater than zero. So there is a logical expression in the bracket. And we get all the positive values for x. Okay, zero based indexing. But r r is not zero based indexing. R starts from the element one. Right, element one. C function to specify the element. Let's have a look what's this. Okay, we say we want the C357 element. So select the 357 element from X. So the third element, fifth element, and the seventh element. Okay. Oh, zero element. Okay, x zero. X zero will give you the numeric zero. <laughs> Three thousand. It give you any. So it is not available. Okay, R also accepts negative index, integer index. So whereas x c two ten give you the second and tenth element, x c what will give you? 
give you the x except for the second and tenth element. Basically means remove the second element and remove the tenth element. So the second and tenth element are being removed. Get the exact value. Okay, so this is the a short way of specifying multiple negative numbers is to put the sign out of it. So you put the sign here yeah, instead of inside the bracket, inside the parentheses. Okay, now create a numeric three element in this. Yeah. Now each element have a name. Factor has full, 11, bar, 2, and uh, no rough. And name. Okay, now since each value has a name, we can find out the, use the name function to find out the column names of this vector. You have full, bar, and uh, north. And create an unnamed vector, vector 2 with this. Vector 2 is new vector. This is the vector 2. Okay, we also call them again. We said when we call this name, see what will happen. It won't have any name. They have no column name, but now since we have this vector 2, we assign the name to the respective values in the vector 2. Okay, now we say we check vector 2 and vector are the same by using an identical function. Identical function. Say identical from the help page, you will see. The identical function, identical x, y, whether x, y are identical or not, so they are called are, are objects. So vector is kind of object. It says everything in R is an object. Every operation in R is a function. Identical. Yeah, that's true. True means a vector one and a vector two are identical. Name the vector. Now, which of the following will do you think will give us the second element of the vector? The first vector bar, vector bar, this one, vector. So first we have a look at the vector. Foo is the first element, uh, name for the first element, bar is the second one, off is the third one. So the third one will be the one. Why not? Is the first one is not because if you say the first one, the bar will be treated as a variable. It will start to find out what is the value for bar beyond this variable. We haven't defined the variable. So we, instead, we should provide a, a string. So try it out. Okay, try it out. Try this. Now we we'll try this. Show you the arrow first. So the bar not found. So bar it R will treat the bar as a variable, but we haven't defined the bar back. So what we can do here is we can define bar equal to a string bar. Yeah, then we try again. Now this time we have the bar value equal to two. Although this is not the expected way, but I'm showing you earlier I defined a bar variable with the value of the character of string bar. Then I use the vector bar. The bar will be uh, replaced by the string. So it will be equivalent to this vector bar string. So they are the same. Okay, specify the vector with this. So basically now we select two names, two column names. <coughs> So it will return two values. Okay, that's the end. Now we know that there are four methods of subsetting data from vectors. Now, 
different uh, approach are best in different scenarios. So we use column, we use bracket, the logical expressions inside, and we use the name the vectors with our values with the names. Okay, that's the end of this course. Uh, we have been seeing the subsetting vectors. Next is matrix, matrix and the data frames. Data frame is one of the very important uh, data structure in R. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later.